Where would we be without the original Nintendo Game Boy? The granddaddy of all portable consoles, if you ask me. I know that there was Game & Watch that came before it, but my gosh, the Game Boy was the first handheld console that really made you feel like you could take your Nintendo games on the go. This was the first time any of us had ever really played gaming on the go in such a way, such a glorious way, and Nintendo really brought it in the early 90s, late 80s, especially in my family. We played tons of Game Boy games when I was a kid, and I really would like to actually just take a moment here in this video to highlight five of the Game Boy games that I played the most when I was a kid. So guys, Bitmap Books actually recently sent me this amazing book, this collection of box art. It's called Game Boy, the Box Art Collection. And so on this edition of My Retro Fives, as we make our way through the countdown, I'm actually going to be showcasing a lot of art and pages from this amazing book as B-roll in my countdown. But without further ado, here are the top five Game Boy games I played when I was a kid. Coming in at number five is Castlevania The Adventure. Castlevania The Adventure was a launch window game for the original Game Boy. And what I mean by that is it actually came out not on launch day, but very close thereafter. I believe it came out in December of 1989. And I played Castlevania The Adventure quite a bit. And the reason for that is I, I just was really entranced by the world of Castlevania in portable black and white mode. Um, I, something about this game is very charming, even though I know it's very clunky. I know that the sequel is actually so much better, Belmont's Revenge. But this was a great launch title, along with the other games that came out for the Game Boy in 1989. And I know a lot of people want to bash it. A lot of people want to say, oh my gosh, it's so clunky. It's so hard to control. Uh, and and you, all the ropes, what's with all the climbing of the ropes? Where are the stairs? I know this is not the best Castlevania game, but it is one of the ones I played the most when I was a kid. Number four spot is Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle 2. Gosh, you know, I love this game so much, and I'm actually, I was so tempted to bump it up a little further. I was a huge fan of Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle on the original NES. My parents owned it. It was one of the games that we actually all played together as a family back in the day. Mom, Dad, and me would take turns with Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle, and it's one that we mastered. I will never forget beating Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle when I was a little kid with Mom and Dad. And so it was a no-brainer when we got a Game Boy in 19. 1992 that I would get Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle 2. It was one of the first games I had on the console. I believe I got it with my system when my parents bought me a Game Boy to go on a road trip in 1992. Game Boy. The difference here between the first game and this game is that you're collecting keys in this one and you're going in and out of doors to get these keys and evade the enemies. It's a very strategic game with really catchy music, really nice visuals that are very easy to see on the Game Boy screen. What made this so playable for me as a kid was the fact that you could kind of take it in doses. It had a really great, easy to remember password function. I actually guessed one day when I was at after school daycare, I guessed the last level password. You wanna know what it is? Here, come a little closer, I'll tell you. It's gift. You can go to the end of Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle 2. If you beat the game, let me know. Coming in at number three, uh, you might think it's uh, Kirby's Dream Land, maybe? That was a incredible game where the character actually debuted on the Game Boy, but no, it's actually, uh, it's Kirby's Block Ball. I love the original breakout games that came out on Atari. That concept and that 
gameplay was done with the Kirby franchise in this amazing game on the Game Boy, the original Game Boy, Kirby's Block Ball. One of the things I love the most about this is your ability to hit the A button right when the Kirby ball, the Kirby ball hits your paddle and you can launch Kirby. He comes out of ball form and into more of his regular Kirby form and he starts breaking the bricks with, with greater force and you score higher points. And what was so cool about this was taking the breakout formula, that old Atari 2600 ar arcade style game and actually morphing it into more of a of a game with different stages and different worlds and one that you really really hoped that you could actually get through and beat the game the original breakout games that were just score based but this game you actually had a chance at beating to completion if you were good enough and i got really good at this game Coming in at number two is one of the most popular games of all time. You probably can guess what it is just by me saying that, and that is Pokemon Blue. I first encountered Pokemon in middle school. I was in seventh grade, and I'll never forget there was a kid in my speech and drama class who was playing the game. All the other kids were crowded around his desk. I went over to his desk and I asked somebody, I said, hey, what's this? What's going on here? What, what game is he playing? It's a game called Pokemon, somebody said. And there you go. I, I was watching him play Pokemon. My mom, actually, uh, I was staying at her house that weekend and we would always have this ritual of going and getting a blockbuster rental. And in this case, it was Pokemon that I saw on the store shelves. The original anime, when it first came out, the very first volume of Pokemon anime, the original anime, and I rented that tape that day. It had the first couple of Pokemon episodes on it, I'll never forget. And um, I watched that anime and immediately fell in love with the whole concept of Pokemon collecting and trading and battling and gotta catch them all, man, gotta catch them all. Pokemon Blue was not just a great role-playing game, it was a full-blown obsession of mine for a good long time in middle school. And uh, because of how addictive it was and how culturally significant it was for my age group at that time, it became one of my most played Game Boy games of all time. If you're a watcher of the My Retro Life series, you probably already guessed this early on. Super Mario Land 2, this was the game that actually made me want to buy a Game Boy, want to get a Game Boy. I was in elementary school and there was a friend of mine, Clayton Dorsey, who had a Game Boy that he constantly would bring to, to after school daycare. And I would see him play it and I would get to play it and he'd let me borrow it. And always, always, it was Super Mario Land 2 that was in the Game Boy. And I learned to love this game in the hallway of, in the after school daycare hallway of my elementary school at the age of six years old. I probably hadn't even turned six yet to be honest. This is just one of those monumental games that was a killer app. You know, you had the original Super Mario Land, and that was not a bad game by any means. In fact, that was a really cool launch title to have. But the sequel, Super Mario Land 2, just destroys the original in every single way. The sprites are bigger. The music is better. Everything about this game is charming from its character designs to the many different environments and lo locations. This was a game that I played till my hands got sore. I swear I played this game so much. In fact, it's featured in the My Retro Life episode about my Game Boy. Go check that out in the My Retro Life playlist if you have not already. You know, this was also the game that introduced Wario. It was cool to have a new antagonist for Mario. And I remember the mystique surrounding Wario. All the ads for this game really highlighted that, that whole point that Mario had a new adversary and he was Wario. He was this like 
twisted version of Mario and evil version of Mario. Obey Wario, destroy Mario. Don't fall under Wario's evil spell in Super Mario Land 2 on the Unkid Boy. <laughs> this game was the best Mario game we had after Super Mario World. And really for the longest time, it was the last Mario game to really feel like a true Mario game until we got Super Mario 64. Because even Yoshi's Island felt like a Yoshi game more than a Mario game. And Wario Land, the quote unquote sequel to this game, that felt more like a Wario game than it did a Mario game. So there's a lot of things that are special about this, this Game Boy Mario game. It wasn't just my most played Game Boy game of all time. It was also one of my favorite Super Mario games of all time. Well, that's it for this edition of My Retro Life Fives with my top five most played Game Boy games from when I was a kid. I'm curious, did any of my selections surprise you? Let me know in the comments below and let me know also, what are your most played Game Boy games, original black and white Game Boy games that you played when you were a kid? I'm very interested in knowing. A big shout out again to Bitmap Books for sending me this awesome Game Boy box art collection book. It is so cool to have this thing. And I just love this book. It's an amazing book that I recommend that each and every one of you check out if you are a fan of the Game Boy or just a fan of retro game collecting in general and you appreciate incredible box art. There will be a link in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you next time.